Mr. Speaker, America has been the light of liberty and a beacon of hope to the world for centuries, truly centuries. <clears throat> We're the greatest nation the world has ever known. We provided more hope and more opportunity and more liberty and more freedom for more individuals than any nation in the history of mankind. But today, July 2009, folks in my district and folks across this land are not just concerned, they're fearful. They're afraid that the very nation that they know and love and that has been the greatest nation in the history of the world is slipping away from them in so many ways. In so many ways. Mr. Speaker, we all just got back to Washington from a week. Many of us spent at home over the July 4th break. And I heard people come up to me and tell me they were concerned and worried and fearful about the amount of spending and the amount of borrowing and the amount of taxing coming out of Washington. They say, Washington's out of control. Mr. Speaker, they're right. They're absolutely right. The deficit this year, $1.8 trillion, four times the largest previous deficit, four times. Borrowing, we're borrowing 50 cents of every single dollar we're spending. Mr. Speaker, it's out of control. Taxing, raising taxes on every single American. I don't care what the president tells you, Mr. Speaker. It's not true. They're raising taxes on every single American. Now the solution, one of the solutions, is to allow this deliberative body, this greatest deliberative body in the history of the world, the opportunity to allow the representatives in this body to work their will, to say, I believe I'm going to represent my constituents in this way and offer this amendment on this bill and thereby allow the House to make a decision. We're in appropriation season, as you know, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. It's a time when we decide how to spend Americans' hard-earned money, the money that they send to Washington. During that season, in the past, the House has allowed appropriations bills to come to the floor under what's called an open rule, which means that everybody gets the opportunity to amend the appropriations bill. They get the opportunity to offer an amendment, and the House gets to vote on the amendment. There were amendments that have been offered on recent bills that have not been allowed. In fact, this is the most majority in the history of the Republic if you use the number of closed rules not allowing amendments to come to the floor. This, Mr. Speaker, is the most repressive majority ever in the history of this Republic. An amendment that was offered but not allowed to the bill that we voted on today would have prohibited funding for any new international organization for the purposes that would tax American energy companies from abroad. The only conclusion I can draw is that the Speaker and the Democrats in charge want American energy companies to be taxed by foreign governments. An amendment that wasn't allowed would have reduced the spending 15 percent on this bill to 2009 levels, a savings of 17 billion dollars. That amendment, Mr. Speaker, not allowed. I can only assume that the Speaker and the Democrats in charge want to increase spending by $17 billion over 2009 levels. An amendment that wasn't allowed, an amendment to prevent U.S. funds from being used to pay the legal expenses of United Nations employees who've been charged with malfeasance, not allowed. Mr. Speaker, I can only include that this, conclude that the Speaker of the House and the Democrats in charge want the American taxpayer to pay the legal expenses for United Nations employees who are charged with malfeasance. And Mr. Speaker, an amendment that wasn't allowed would have prohibited assistance to members of foreign terrorist organizations. Mr. Speaker, the only thing I'm left to conclude and the American people are left to conclude is that this Speaker and the Democrats in charge want the American taxpayer to pro provide assistance for members of foreign terrorist organizations. Mr. Speaker, this isn't the way the House is supposed to be run. It's not the way the House has been run for the last 233 years. It's not the way that the American people learned about democracy, that their representatives would be allowed to represent them actively and aggressively. 
so that people had the opportunity to represent their constituents equally with every other member. But, Mr. Speaker, right now, in this chamber, we have tyranny from the majority, tyranny that is not allowing the voice of the people to be heard. Mr. It's Speaker, expired. I demand that this chamber, that these members of this House of Representatives make certain that the rules are appropriately followed and end the tyranny of the majority in this chamber now. Mr. Gomert from Texas.